Last week, a viewer left a comment saying that they were thinking about selling their whole comic book collection and then turning around and using that money to buy one or two of their comic book grails. And they asked me if I thought that was a good idea and if I thought that they would eventually regret it. And I thought this was a fantastic question. In fact, such a great question that I thought it'd be worth making a whole video over. Now, I don't think there's really a right or wrong answer to this question, but I wanna share some of the pros and cons of going each way and then let you know what I think I would do and I wanna hear from you. What would you do? What do you think is the right decision? Now, of course, the biggest pro to selling your whole collection in exchange for one or two comic grails is that all of a sudden you will be holding and owning some of your dream books and some of the coolest comic books in all of history. And obviously that's gonna bring you a ton of joy. For me, if I sold everything, I think I should be able to get a copy of Amazing Fantasy number 15, the first appearance of Spider-Man. I mean, how cool is that? I get excited just thinking about it, just dreaming about it. So can you imagine the joy that you would actually have holding that comic book in your hands, knowing that it's yours. And something that you could easily do with one or two of these big books that are known even by casual comic book fans is then display them somewhere around your house like a piece of art. And when people come over, it will be a great conversation piece and of course a source of bragging rights. I mean, you'll be part of an elite group of comic collectors and, and obviously what we can afford is different based on what our current collections are, but all of us certainly could get a bigger book than we own right now if we sold all of our collection for that book. And there's also some financial benefits to going in this direction because of course these books are so valuable because the demand for them is so high and generally the supply of them are very low. We're usually talking about Silver Age or Golden Age comic books and so they're fairly scarce. And of course Economics 101 teaches us that the higher the demand for a commodity, the greater its value and the lower the supply, the greater its value. And something like Amazing Fantasy 15 is going to have high demand for a long, long time because of its historical significance, because people love Spider-Man, and of course the supply is going to remain low. It can't get larger. Now obviously there might be a few hidden in an attic somewhere that are yet to be discovered, but my point is they're not printing any more Amazing Fantasy 15s, and so the supply in general is gonna remain the same or low, and so you can consider books like Amazing Fantasy 15 to be like blue chip comic book investments. They're, they're just gonna be as safe as you can get when it comes to a collectible, and furthermore, if you ever get in a bad situation where you need your money back, it's going to be easy to turn around and sell that. It's going to be much more liquid than comics that are in less demand, and it's going to be less time consuming than trying to sell thousands of comic books. And so it can also provide some financial security and protect you from hard times in that way. And that ease, liquidity, and the limited amount of time that it takes to sell that book is also important because of, as I've talked about several times in my videos, something we always need to keep in mind is that one day our collection will be left to someone and the likelihood is that that person is not going to care about comics as much as we are and so we want to make it easy on them to sell those books and get at least close to full value. And if they only have to worry about one or two grails, man, that's gonna make that job so much easier for them. So maybe you wanna make this decision just to make it easy on your wife or your kids or whoever it might be. Another reason this can make financial sense is because it's gonna save you tons of space in your house versus having hundreds or thousands of comic books lying around. Now something I don't think many of us consider enough is that each square foot of our home has a value to it. And if you give that square footage to your comics or whatever it might be, 
then you're basically renting out that space to those comics. You're paying for that space. Or I've seen some people have so many comics, and maybe some of you do, that they have to get a rental unit. I mean, space costs money. And so if you have less space occupied by your comic books, then you are saving money in that way as well. And it's just not as much of a hassle to deal with. I mean, the amount of time that I spend organizing my collection, oh, it's not good. And it's still not organized. The, the, the time you save in that alone might make this the right decision to go with. Time is money, and the time you save from not having to spend so much in organization might make the whole thing worth it just for that reason. I mean, literally, if I think about my time, it's hundreds or thousands of dollars a year that I'm spending through my time on my comic collection. Now, of course, all of us are doing this as a hobby, so we probably enjoy putting that time into our collection, but it is an investment of time, and time is the one resource that you can never, never get back. And so it's the most valuable one that I think that you have. And so you have to ask, man, is it really worth spending all of this time on this collection versus having one or two books that I can just look at and admire and not have to worry about? Man, I, I, am I convincing myself to do this? I'm, I'm trying to be uh, non-partial here, but I'm making a really good argument for doing what this guy is thinking about. However, of course, there are pros to not making that decision. And obviously, the biggest pro is if you're in this hobby, you love comic books. And if you're a collector, you just want lots of comic books. I know that I do. I love to hold them. I love to read them. I like to fill in runs and be a completionist. I mean, there's lots of things that I enjoy about having a ton of comic books. Now, I will say, if I was gonna make the decision that this guy is thinking about doing, I would probably sell all my collection and then just focus on trying to fill up some of my short boxes that are left empty with just dollar books, just so that I have some comics lying around. I mean, that would be easy to do. Obviously, those dollar comics would be limited in their quality, but that quality would be absorbed by the Amazing Fantasy 15 that I have on display in my house. Now, another reason you might not want to go in the direction that that guy is thinking is that if you do have the room in your house, then you can dedicate a whole section, or I'm sure we all know people who have dedicated a whole room to their collection. And you can just go in and find so much joy just sitting there with your comics, reading. It can be kind of like you're, if you're a guy, man cave, or if you're lady, lady cave, whatever. There's the woman equivalent of a man cave. And, and, and just get away from everything and just relax and look at your comic books and look at your comic posters and, and just find a nice, quiet, safe space for you just to love. And it can also serve as that conversation starter that the big amazing fantasy 15 on your wall could you know when people come over you can say oh hey man check out this room and they'll go in and be like wow dude you're a real collector that's awesome and of course that can bring a lot of joy to you furthermore there can be a financial benefit to not going in the direction this guy is thinking because if you have lots of comics then you have a more diverse portfolio and of course if you know anything about investing Diversity in a portfolio can offer some protection because if one asset crashes in value, like let's say Amazing Fantasy 15, for whatever reason, people just start hating Spider-Man and it just crashes in value. If all my money is tied up in that book, then I'm just screwed. However, if I have several assets, then if one crashes, the others retain their value, then I'm going to be okay. Now, like I said earlier, the blue chip comics are as safe as you can get to have one or two comics, but there's just no guarantee, especially if you're talking decades down the line. I mean, it's obviously very unlikely that all of a sudden next year, no one's gonna care about Amazing Fantasy 15, but it could see a correction in the market and seeing a 10% drop on that book is a much bigger deal than seeing a 10% drop on a book that's worth $1,000 or $500 or whatever it might be. So the question then is, what would I do? Well, I think if I weren't emotionally invested 
And of course, we all are emotionally invested in this hobby. I think if, if I was just thinking it as purely an impartial, unbiased thing, I think the right decision, again, it's hard to say a right decision, but maybe the optimal decision is to sell your whole collection if you can get you know, close to full value for it, of course, and have one or two really grail comic books. But I, you know, I don't think I can actually ever do that because of my emotional investment. How I answered this guy in the comments and what I think is more realistic is that maybe I could sell like 95% of my collection and keep a few of the books that really mean a lot to me because of course I have some real personal connections and personal stories with some of those books. And I, I could see myself trading the bulk of my collection in exchange for one or two grails. But there's some books I don't know if I could let go of. But the problem with that, of course, those books that I don't want to let go of tend to be my more valuable books. And so that limits which grail I can have. You know, if you see my channel, you know that I inherited an Incredible Hulk 181 from my father-in-law. So I don't ever want to give that book up. But that is the type of book that would help me get an Amazing Fantasy 15 one day. And so it's a really tough decision. And I don't think I would do it, but I'm curious, what would you do? Like, let's say whatever your grail is, if you knew that you could get that by giving away your whole collection, would you do it? And of course, the other question the guy asked me is if I thought he would regret making the decision that he was considering. And so I responded by saying that I thought he would have tons of joy by having one or two comic grails. But I still think it's inevitable that there would be at least moments of regret. Again, we have such an emotional, personal connection to our comics that he would always miss like, man, I know I have my Incredible Hulk 181 or Werewolf by Night 32, whatever, whatever it might be. But man, I really like that Wolverine number one. I know it's not as valuable as some of these, but man, that, that was a book I had worked hard for and saved up for for a long time and I finally got it and now it's gone. I mean, we would just have those types of feelings, I think. But on the other hand, it would definitely be easier to replace some of those lower tier books over time than all of a sudden to be able to get the Amazing Fantasy 15 again. And especially because over time, comics tend to go up. And so the more expensive grails are the ones that are going to increase in value the most and put them even more out of reach over time, where some things that might already be in your collection, you might be able to replace a little more easier in the next two or three years. But again, tell me in the comments below what you think about this decision. Could you pull the trigger on this or not? Or have you pulled the trigger on something similar to this? I'm really interested to hear what you have to say. Now, of course, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd really appreciate if you consider doing so now. Like, subscribe, all those things that help us out. Thanks for watching, and as always, I look forward to the next one.